Okay, hi, my name's Matt, and this is a short video about the speed of light experiment. Um, so this experiment is going to cover the topics of classical mechanics and a little bit of special relativity as well. Uh, and this is just a video to show you the equipment that's used in the lab. Uh, so there's two main parts to this experiment. Uh, in the first part of the experiment, you're going to be measuring the speed of light in air. And then in the second part of the experiment, you're going to be measuring the speed of light in different materials. And so those materials are going to be water and acrylic. Uh, this is the setup for the first part that you're looking at at the moment. So this is for measuring the speed of light in air. Uh, you've got a, a laser source here um, that's emitting a modulated laser beam. And you can see at the moment it's modulated at 50 megahertz. Uh, you've got a reflector here that the laser source is coming out of, bouncing off and going back in where it's measured. And you've got an oscilloscope at the back here, which is displaying both the modulated laser light going out and the laser light that it's receiving as well. Uh, so what you need to do in the first part of the experiment is set the laser up and calibrate it at a certain point on, uh, on this optical table bench here. Uh, so at the moment I have it set up at the 20 centimeter position. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is change the mode to here and you can see it's flashing cal because it hasn't been calibrated yet. So what I'm going to do is press the calibrate button and this effectively sets the zero point for the experiment. And so you can see it's now zero here. And hopefully what you can also see is now a green shape. The waveform has shown up on the back here and that's the calibrated uh, reflected laser that's coming back off the mirror. Um, so then the way the measurement's done in this part of the experiment is pretty simple. Uh, basically you move the mirror in some fixed increment. So for example here I'm going to move it 10 centimeters back and you're going to use the oscilloscope to look at the amount of extra time it takes for the laser light to travel that extra distance. Uh, so I'll move it from 20 back to 30. So it's now sitting at about 30 and hopefully what you can see is that the green uh, I guess waveform here on the oscilloscope has moved slightly back in time and you can also see there's a phase pick up here. Um, so I'm just going to show you that again uh, but closer view on the oscilloscope so you can actually see what happens as I move the mirror further back. Okay so I've moved the mirror back to the original 20 centimeter position where it's calibrated uh, to be zero and so if I now start moving the mirror backwards so the light has to travel further, hopefully you can see that that green uh, waveform, which is the reflected signal, is starting to move further back in time. So they're now not completely in sync. Uh, the light that's traveling to the mirror and coming back is taking a little bit longer. Uh, and so by measuring the difference in those two times, so between this point on the yellow wave and this point on the green wave, you can calculate the amount of extra time that it's taken for the light to travel. Uh, and then based on that distance, you can calculate the speed of light. Okay, so I've now changed the setup to the second part of the experiment. And so what you're doing in this experiment, oh, sorry, in this part of the experiment is measuring the speed of light for different materials that is other than air. So I now have an acrylic rod that's sitting in between the laser source and the mirror. Uh, and so you can see that what's happened is now the calibration is completely different. So what you do in this part now is recalibrate by pressing the calibrate button again. And you can see that re-zeroes it. Uh, and now if I take the acrylic rod out, we'll see a shift, okay? Uh, and so what you then need to do in this part of the experiment is to move the mirror to offset and calculate effectively the extra distance that the light has traveled by traveling through the acrylic rod rather than just traveling through the air. So you're gonna move the mirror back until once again, the, uh, the two waveform traces on the oscilloscope line up with each other. And then in doing so, you'll have effectively measured the extra distance that the light traveled while it was traveling through the acrylic rod. Um, so you'll do that for the acrylic rod and you'll also do it uh, with the tube filled with water, which you can see is the black tube uh, laying on the back of the bench there. And um, so that will allow you to calculate the speed of light both while it's struggling through the acrylic rod and through the water as well.
So now I just want to show you what that looks like on the oscilloscope. So I've put the acrylic rod back in the way of the laser. So it's now traveling through the acrylic rod uh, and I've recalibrated it. So you can see that the yellow and green traces are now lying on top of each other. Um, so if I now take the acrylic rod out, what you should see is the green trace should shift, which it does uh, because it's now traveling effectively a shorter distance because it's traveling through air rather than through acrylic. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is move the mirror so that the traces line up on top of each other. So start moving it backwards. Cool, and so they're now lined up. And so based on the distance that I had to move the mirror, I can now figure out the extra uh, path length that the light had to travel through the acrylic.